So can I call on stage uh, Dr. Faraz Hafezi, Dr. Damien, and Dr. Rohit Shetty, who would be conducting? So we can start with Damien first. So I think this is, uh, both of you are very emphatic about your uh, standpoints on this. <laughs> Dr. Gatinel doesn't believe in cross-linking, and he feels that just stopping eye rubbing is the answer. Mm. And uh, Dr. Hefezi, of course, has been one of the pioneers uh, in cross-linking. So let's see, uh, what are your opening statements about cross-linking? Why do you think uh, uh, it, uh, it's not a hype and it's a reality? And why do you think it's a hype? Well, I think um, if we were in the year 1999, I would have to explain why it's not a hype, but after 19 years of clinical application, far more than a thousand Medline publications, and the fact that in the two countries that have a registry for keratoplasty, the Netherlands and England, and they have both published that the number of keratoplasties has dropped by 30 to 50 percent in the past 10 years, I think it's rather on Damian to explain to us why it's a hype. <laughs> Yeah, well, uh, for me, uh, I would say that I'm not saying that I don't believe, I don't think believing or not believing makes sense in this kind of field because cross-linking exists, it's a widespread procedure, and uh, I'm not like putting any uh, like uh, skepticism on the fact that it has stabilized some people. My point is that you have techniques sometimes which work in a way which is not the intended way. Because I have w one question for you in the audience that you may not have thought about. That is, what is cross-linking? Elementary speaking, it's creating co covalent bounds and it's usually to make any material more rigid, right? If you use cross-linking in the dental art for teeth, uh, uh, fixing, etc. All dentists will tell you that cross-linking works right away and stops when they remove the pedal of the UV light. And my question to you, Faraz, is why is that you have to wait three to six months to see something happening? Uh -huh. And I would th then rephrase that cross-linking is not cross-linking per se, but it's a mechanism of wound healing which is induced by an inf inflammatory reaction caused by a folk photochemical trauma to the corneal trauma. It's a very long explanation, but that's how I see it. Now to say if it's useful or not, I think, of course, if, for example, if it makes the eye less sensitive to eye rubbing and, or if the eye is painful and it creates like a conscious uh, awareness that you shouldn't touch your eye anymore, that's perfect. Let's do it, you know? But then wh wh why do you have to wait three to six months? Because it should work right now. I mean, it's a photochemical reaction which is immediate. Um, well, first of all, we all know that in the lab you can have an immediate effect that can be measured. But you're talking about the clinical condition. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And what I really liked about this talk is that it forced me to rethink my own arguments. Because uh, your, your hypothesis is, is quite provocative, which is good. Um, first of all, Damien, medicine is, f and, and, and science is full of examples where for years, even decades, we have been applying things we had not the slightest clue why they work, mm -hmm. but we know that they work. So in all due respect, I do not care how do you call it as long as the effect is there and what you postulate behind. Let's give you a few examples. I had to look it up. Um, modern physics is based on Einstein's theory of gravitational waves. Mm -hmm postulated in 1916, proven a hundred years later. Mm -hmm. The Higgs boson was, was proven in 2014 at CERN in Geneva, received the Nobel Prize one year later. The theory behind it comes from 1967. So we all are used to have decades of, of something that seems to be the case and then it needs a final proof that comes way later. So I think this is where we are standing with cross-linking. As we do with many other things, we know that there is a mechanism behind it. Oh, another example. Do you use paracetamol in your clinic? Uh, yeah, we do sometimes, of course. Why? Because well, it's a placebo. If, 
No, no, if you go into literature, into any review, it will tell you, to date, the energetic mechanism of paracetamol has not been elucidated. We do not know why it works yeah. and we've been using but, but it for decades. No, but we agree. Then what, what I'm saying from the beginning since this cross-linking story, because I can tell you my skepticism is long. In 2006, some people in France were doing the first cross-linking studies and they didn't have the ORA system, you know, the ocular response analyzer. So they sent me the patient to be measured before and after. And after, you, sh you wouldn't see anything. It was usually worse, worse, not equal. Yeah, because of, of course, you create inflammation, maybe, you know, so the, the surface was a little more ir irregular. So I was sending the data back and they were not pleased. And my point was that, okay, now we don't see any more rigidity, which is the first goal of this procedure. We should maybe revise the procedure but they concluded completely differently, say, your instrument doesn't work. I think, is this scientific? Are we, uh, as doctors, should we go this way? And taking the paracetamol is exactly a good example. It's like you expect the fever of uh, someone to go down. So you have a, temp a thermometer, you measure it, 38.5 Celsius, take the paracetamol, measure it, 38.6, 38.4, Oh, your thermometer doesn't work. That's what I received at that time. So since then, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying you should do or not do cross-linking. I mean, that's not the... But we should more focus on how it works. Because as you say, you know, Einstein start, started his thinking because at that time, the theory of space and, and, and things did not predict what was observed. And that's exactly why in the same vein that you are explaining, we should revise the understanding of cross-linking instead of waiting any confirmation of a hypothetical effect, because what we may find is that it may work in some ways which are not due to any reticulation, which has never been demonstrated, by the way, really, and uh, for a clinical evidence of strengthening, which has never been demonstrated in vivo. Of course, in vitro, cross-linking works. My shoes are cross-linked, leather is cross-linked, but in vivo, it's not achieving that goal. It may achieve satellite goals, some of them desirable in this context, but not the rigidity. This, this is something point. I want uh, you to see. Why, Why aren't we not see? getting this? In vivo, because yes. in vitro it <laughs> works. I think this would have been true and everything that Damien has just said would be valid until Giuliano Scarcelli. Um, your argument is that we don't have technology sensitive enough to pick up the signal that you're right with the aura, you're probably right with the corvus. But again, what we have discussed before in physics was that f for many years we had a valid theory, a whole construct based on it, and it took time to prove it. Same thing here, now we have brio in microscopy, and we can measure in vivo the effect that you wanted. I suggest you, rev you revise your defeat Keratokonos, very nice website by the way, but you have to revise your whole thinking because you base it on the mechanism cannot be, the, the effect cannot be measured, that's not true anymore. With prion microscopy we can measure yeah, humans well, I in was vivo. At and we uh, just, uh, sorry, we just yeah. showed that LASIK extra hmm. does not work. Yes. And you say that um, the, the effect cannot be measured and the mechanism is not as elucidated and I gave, gave you a bunch of a bunch of explanations in other fields of science. The third one you mentioned, I had to read your very interesting uh, keratochronic sine qua non. You said there is no Cochrane review on keratochronus. That's the reason why on crosslinking, that's the reason you shouldn't do it. The, there, w there is one. There is one. The, the, yeah. There is a review that yeah. says it's negative. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Now, anybody doing plastic and reconstructive surgery in the room? Oculoplasty surgery. Oculoplastics. Here? Yeah, you should stop exerting your profession because there is not a single Cochrane review on the effectiveness of your surgeries. <laughs> there is one. There is one on on acupuncture effect on sty. Though you can, you may continue treating styes with acupuncture. So you have to just bring up better just arguments. I wanted to ask one question to Dr. Gatnell. Let's say you have a patient with keratoconus and you advise him to stop eye rubbing, and he follows your instruction: no eye rubbing. Mm -hmm. And you follow up and you find there is progression. What do you do for that patient? But that never happens. <laughs> <laughs> no, but this is why we put that website. Because how can I convince people? I mean, 
I'm not crazy. I don't need cross-linking of to be to be famous. I have many other things in my in my thing. No, I, I, I created I created the first trifocal IOL. With this, I'm happy for the rest of my career, right? So if I'm here standing trying to convince people, and I I know I'm swimming against the flow, I know that. But again, to me, I'm a simple mind. I'm very simple. You have a procedure which is made just for making a tissue stiffer. There's no way to demonstrate any stiffening, but the instruments you use are very good to demonstrate stiffening. You do a LASIK, pre and post or array system, uh, signals will, will show you that something happened. You do a PTK for 10 microns sometimes, it's even showed on the Corvius or ORA, right? So why the instrument, which is stupid, would go against the arrow of time, that is, if you make a cornea stiffer, it wouldn't show it. That's all I'm saying. So my point is not do or not do cross-linking. I don't, I don't do it, of course, because first, patients who stop rubbing, they don't progress, and the website shows it clearly, because I don't want to lose my reputation and my, and my, my job at Rothschild. Suppose, like I said, when those pa parents with their children come to me, and when I advise them not to do cross-linking, but come back whenever they want to do the difference map, if they would progress, how would I look like? Stupid, my resident are there, my fellow are there. We have a fellow in common, you know, Emilio, he tells you probably what happens in Russia. <laughs> what, what happens to me is the opposite. I receive, I can show testimonial of parents thanking me, thanking me for being the first to interview their child, to ask about the sleeping position, the atopy history, send them to ocular surface specialist because what Roy does is very important. You need to control ocular surface inflammation, blepharitis, meibomian gland dysfunction. All these things are all like interplaying to converge to one thing, which is eye rubbing. And if you stop it again, it doesn't happen I, because I, I would lose my job if it would. Can I ask you a question? Yes. I think this is what Dr. Rajesh Pogla said, that we don't have a machine to measure it, so probably we can build it one. That's the future. But there are mathematical modeling like this. Uh, can you play the video, please? It's a short 30-second video, which says that it's getting stronger. Do you agree to this or not? All mathematical modeling say you are a man of, you, you, you love mathematics, right? Yeah. So, and do you agree yeah, but to this? I love, I love math, but the model is sometimes something you put what you want to, I mean, that's what I was trying to explain yesterday. My first model, I wanted to prove something which was against my conclusion, and then it led to the discovery of the cosine effect on the cornea. So, of course, if you create bonds in any tissue, it may work. But you should believe yeah. in this because you have a PhD in mathematics. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> There's a life before and after this, by the way. <laughs> I was reborn we, we, on we the 12th, we'll use this 12th of July last year was the second, there's my life, my life has started now, my new life since then. <laughs> it was a, a great work, but yeah, that, like Zonicky polynomials is a mathematical construction which is not really... That's mathematics. Yeah. This is also mathematics, so we should believe in this. Have you noticed how much this guy has to fight to defend his theory? <laughs> we could just lean back. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that, we, you, that's... We created functions to better describe a process. There's no mechanism, there's no prediction much. How know, many of this, in this crowd I mean, have not started cross-linking or you don't want to start cross-linking if you can just lift your hand up? How many of you in this crowd do cross-linking? Well, Rohit, routine? this is not fair. Nobody from France is in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we have a lady from Georgia here. We have uh, somebody from, okay, from Arabia. I have a question. We know that uh, you're arguing that it uh, doesn't really help cross-linking and there's no real proof, but we have cases where we have seen flattening up to 8 and 10 diopters. Right. So you are having some reversal. So if there is a chance yeah, but it, it to happen flattening, why yeah. would you not want to take that But chance? this flattening, how long it takes to happen? Three months, six months, one year? Yeah. So I'm not saying it doesn't flatten. I'm just saying that the mechanism that it works may not be reticulation of the collagen, but more like a secondary wound healing. Half patients, they had like interstitial keratitis or a herpes zoster. 
uh, stromal uh, immunological reaction. What happened to them is that they flattened by eight diopters, like also one year later. So, so I, I tell you another thing: weakening of the cornea. When you do camera inlay implantation, you know you, you, you make a 250 micron flap sometimes. Put a foreign body in a cornea, and when you put the flap back. You expect the patient to see better, but what happens, like over time, they flatten also by five diopters in the center, for, and they have a hyperopic shift because of wound healing, probably similarly to what may happen in cross-linking uh, over, over the time. If you would show me that once you have released the pedal of the UV light, there's a seven diopter flattening on the cornea, which I would expect because it, it should work right now, then I would say cross-linking works. You know what I mean? I mean, and I, would no, I wouldn't believe it could happen because how could just a photochemical reaction create a shape change so dramatic? I understand oh, now. Yeah, Maybe it's I the know. mathematical mind that does not accept that there is <laughs> more to the cornea and a whole cascade of reactions that modulate and that take time. And this is cell biology. This is not pure mathematics. <laughs> this is not pure physics. This is the reaction of your body to... But on the other hand, I mean, why do we even care why it flattens? Medicine, as I said, is full of examples. We use it every day of treatments but that we use that they work. They but care because it flatters by eight diapters. We would be happy it was one diapter, two diapters. Mm -hmm. So that is what the big challenge is. Why should yeah. it flatten eight diapters? Oh. Dr. Berlin has a point. Yes. Yeah. Two things. One, I'll, I'll quote a mathematician who's not a physician, but Cynthia Roberts, well, we say the cornea is not a piece of plastic, but you're looking for a, a response of a piece of plastic. But I want to go back to a mathematical question. You alluded to earlier that these eye rubbers raise their pressure dramatically when they, it's a forcible rub, but uh, intr raising intraocular pressure causes a surface tension. The surface tension is increased not at the steep part of the cornea, but at the flattest, which is Laplace's uh, law. It's inversely related to the radius of curvature. Mm -hmm. Why, if that's the case, and that's a mathematical computation of surface tension related to pressure, do we see progression at the steepest part and not at the flattest part? Oh, I tell you something. When people rub, something has been overlooked as well. It's the Bell's phenomenon. Because when you close your eye, the eyeball rotates up, and we have but good... The pressure is going to be equal throughout the globe. Right, but... In it so they I have want a really good answer, because if I don't have a good answer, no. I can't understand it, I can't follow it. No, but what I'm saying is, we don't, we don't really know the answer. No, but the but effect of... believe in it. No, but the effect of eye rubbing is, is plural. First, it exerts a direct pressure. It may increase the distension of fibrils. It may also uh, 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 expand, I mean, push the extracellular matrix aside, so explaining the local focal thinning that you observe first. But you never know really much where the actual trauma occurs because it's very complicated. If it's a grinding movement, it may be everywhere on the flat, on the steep. The Bell's phenomenon plays a role. And we have now the thinking, but because we don't have many observations, that those keratoconus who look like pellucid marginal degeneration, which are very thin inferiorly, are occurring in patients who rub like inferiorly with a very marked Bell's phenomenon. And we have patients who have not only a very inferior thinning and deformation, but iris, iris uh, iridoschisis, which is the iris fiber distortion. We have a case on our website. When you look at the slit lamp, you see the iris is distorted at the place where the patient rubs, and it's very close to the thinnest point of the cornea, which is very inferior. So this is all Damia, this is, this is the cross-linking debate, yeah, not but the that's very important. That was 20 minutes ago. <laughs> no, I know, but everything's connected. Okay. I mean, when you say, science, we don't care how it works, and it, 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 but that's how science progresses, by people who challenge a why question, and then people discover a satellite phenomena which leads to a progress. You, you, are, you, are, you are quoting Einstein and you apply the opposite reasoning. He developed the theory because he observed that the answers, people would not really question the world, and he had a further question because he was not satisfied with the current mechanism of mm -hmm. uh, the, the, you know, the Newtonian uh, physics at that time. And that's my point. I'm not saying I'm Einstein or Newton, I'm just getting ill, but I'm telling you that again, if a procedure works, which is not the debate, my, my point is that cross-linking may not stiffen the cornea, and when we discover why, we may develop the real corneal strengthening procedure that will work. But as long as we satisfy ourselves with 
like uncertainties, I don't think we but, do a good job. But I like what Dr. Fogler said, necessity is mother of all invention. We are not seeing a change, maybe because it's not that it's not happening, may or may not, because we're not able to measure it. Mm -hmm. So we, you and uh, I think uh, with uh, Brad uh, Randleman yeah. groups have started working on uh, Brillio microscopy. Uh, we are also fortunate to get a grant uh, which got approved, Indo, Indo Netherlands grant, to build our own uh, Brillio microscopy. So we will invite you next year. Oh, great. And we will show you if Brillio microscopy works. Okay. But we already did, Rohit. We showed the data three months ago and it submits on the it. LASIK, LASIK in a extra. In, uh, patients have been started to be measured at USC. Yeah. The challenge of Brillio microscopy, I think yeah. he would also agree, but is the present generation one is takes a hell of a lot of it and it's slow, it's not repeatable mm -hmm. and it's got its problem. Am I right? Yeah, I, I hope you can show it because I was at Arvo and I was roving the poster and there's a rerun study but it was on refractive surgery and the, the fellow asked, of course you've done cross-linking evaluation. She said, yes I did and say, what did you see? Uh, she said, uh, we are still working on it. Say, but did you see any strengthening? She said, not really, but we, you know, we have only 20 patients so we are waiting to include more. And the second thing is because we, I like your Einstein thing. At the time of Einstein, people were thinking that emptiness cannot exist so the, uh, the universe would be plunge into what they call the ether, right? And they've made so many measurements to measure that ether until people like Einstein say, no, there's no ether because... <laughs> and people will say, oh, instruments doesn't work, we cannot measure ether, and emptiness is impossible. Empti emptiness has been shown to be possible after like centuries of people trying, brilliant people like Newton believed in ether, Descartes believed in ether, uh, many people until Einstein and maybe a few other would decided that because we can't measure it, Finally, we have to admit there's maybe no ether. So maybe they are not... So, with this, with uh, this uh, you reasoning, I mean. <laughs> with, with this reasoning yes. you wouldn't have given any penicillin in 1952 because it took another 20 years to decipher the mechanism. You would have had no, no, no. everybody no, no, no. die of an infection no, no, no. because penicillin's mechanism was not elucidated. No, no, That's I know. exactly the same. No, I know, but penicillin goal is to kill a germ. If you take germs like in a box and you put penicillin, they die. Yeah, but the effect was, was not measurable and was not explained. No, it was measurable, but because it, it well, was Well, we measure working. too. We, we measure an arrest in, 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 uh, in ectasia. You can say that washing your hands prevents even, even more people from dying than taking penicillin, and you are right. Maybe. And this is why eye rubbing is a trigger. It is an important trigger. Nobody defies we'll, we'll it. We'll go back to no. ectasia. For post-LASIK ectasia, we know that sometimes they can progress rapidly. And uh, yes, uh, eye rubbing may be a factor, but it may not be. So do you believe even post-LASIK ectasia is essentially eye rubbing or uh, these are different and these would probably qualify for a cross Yeah, based on my observation, and we have, we have had many cases lately, especially the late onset ectasia, because there are two ectasia type, the one which is completely unpredicted, like you showed yesterday, and the one which before the surgery you could see like the cornea was not good. And the other very important point which leads to this ectasia thing, in my theory of rubbing giving keratoconus, is, this, is that it explains all the missing links, I mean all the broad spectrum of sodal deformation. If you have patients with asymmetric bow ties, sodal ones, ask them, and they will tell you that they rub, but not so much, and usually they use this, which is not as detrimental as the thing. So you can correlate subtle deformation. So my point is that if you have a patient who traumatized his cornea chronically and you do LASIK, it's a second hit which is accelerating the biomechanical decompensation. If uh, you have a patient, my patient with ectasia, usually they have a good, uh, they sleep on the side, they develop ectasia, they rub more the eye on which uh, they developed ectasia, so you can ask something. I don't do cross-linking after ectasia, I just say stop to the rubbing and it works. And again, I don't want to have problems. If it wouldn't work, I wouldn't do it. Um, we'll take one last question and break for lunch. No, it's not a question, it's actually oh, a comment. Okay, I'm just trying to be very objective here. It just bothers me a bit that um, Dr. Hafizi is saying that uh, because Cross-linking is um, something which we are not so sure about, but because it's working, right? Uh, so we should continue, plot on, and try to find 
evidence to show that it works. Is that what you're saying? Could you say it again, please? <coughs> yeah. Okay, so I, what I'm saying is I'm just a bit bothered. Sh uh, uh, Dr. Chen is co-editor of DefeatKeratokonos.com, by the way. She's not partial. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but that's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> it's public knowledge. Yeah. Okay, so, but, um, well, I'm co-editor because I think I believe uh -huh. in, the, um, in the what is being mentioned in the website. But um, basically, it bothers me. I mean, to be very scientific, I think mm -hmm. it's important to be very objective here. So you're saying that because Panadol works and, um, and in the past or currently nobody knows how it's working or penicillin for many, many years, no one knew how it worked. Mm -hmm. Eventually, we all use it right now. So you're saying that uh, for cross-linking, we should actually go along the same path and... Um, Invest uh, and carry on doing this procedure simply because we are seeing an effect in some patients, right? Is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay, but the problem with this kind of mentality is sometimes you will close your mind to what may be an alternative uh, treatment for keratoconus, all right? May because I just respectfully, respectfully remind you that 18 years ago, we opened our minds so far <laughs> that we established an out-of-the-box thinking that almost crucified us the first years. The first years, I was standing where Damia is right now, and people were shouting at us, how do we dare put UV lights on a cornea? And this is why, although we have a very tough debate, I like what you're doing because provocative thinking is what we need. This is where I fully agree. Okay, but yeah. what I'm trying to say is, I'm not saying that cross-linking doesn't work. But I think it's very important for all of us to open our minds to the fact that it may not work the way you intend it to, so that scientifically your mind is open to other pathways. So I don't think you should actually dismiss what Damien is saying, because he may be right. You may be right, he may be right, because at the moment there's no concrete evidence that cross-linking actually stiffens the cornea. What we see, what we know, is that it flattens the cornea, and that may be because the epithelium is removed. That's why epi off cross-linking is more effective than epi on. In fact, when you do an epithelial removal, because of modulation of the healing of the epithelium, there's natural flattening, which is why the flattening occurs over time and not immediately. So I think it's very important to open our minds to alternative pathways and alternative... That, um, that's means. the reason we have been last two days, uh, last 24 hours, we've been discussing a lot of yes. probably alternative pathways okay, of so healing. Of, For of me, all. I'm, not, I'm not like Damien. I don't, do not totally not do cross-linking. So this is how I manage my patients with keratoconus. So when they come to see me, I'll interrogate very, very carefully about eye rubbing history. All right? And most, in fact, many of them rub their eyes. In fact, most mm -hmm. of them. Initially, some of them may not realize the fact that they're rubbing, but eventually when you interrogate them long enough, they will tell you they're rubbing. There are some patients, despite what you do, you refer them to an ocular disease specialist, you give them anti-inflammatory drugs, uh, anti-mast cell inhibitors, yeah. they still cannot stop rubbing their eyes, and the keratoconus progresses, I will cross-link them. And somehow cross-linking, um, you know, uh, does desensitize the eye, and some of them find that within the first few months after cross-linking, because they're afraid to touch the eye, this habit of rubbing gradually, uh, I mean, they, they stay away from it. Okay, so I mean, I have changed my practice um, of uh, managing keratoconus in a way, maybe because it's his, of his so, influence. But so you are applying... There are valid points that he's yeah, bringing up. You're, you're applying an empiric approach, but I think, unfortunately, <coughs> after all these years and the overwhelming evidence, it's up to you two to give us the proof in the pudding. Show us why your theory is is correct, and I will be the first to adopt it. And I think of, of all congresses yes, I visit throughout the year, <laughs> this congress is the one that needs the least reminder of being open and innovative and open yes, to so new with ideas. with time, yeah. this thing about eye rubbing, I mean, you say it's anecdotal, that's true, but with time, this, um, it may be possible to prove it eventually, but we need to open our minds to that. I think that's the most important thing. Take home point is we open the minds, yes. come back again, and find what's new. Exactly. And last thing, the biggest challenge for us about this new technology, Brillion, is as a friend of French, I want you to tell us how do you pronounce? Because <laughs> it's a French word and each one pronounces it and we don't know French. Okay, wait, so we can do all together. So we say. Because this. Brillion. 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 
Briouin. It, Briouin. No, but you know, bef I knew how to say it, but because now be people are saying it with other accent, it, it's difficult for me to say it in French now. I'm saying like more Briouin or Briouin, but it's <laughs> Briouin. And I would like also to just add something, Briouin. not to, to extend the debate, but just to thank you, Rohit, and thank you, Farad, for being very... Uh, open-minded to uh, create this debate because it's this not everywhere that you can... Yeah, but I know many colleagues, they are like, they don't want to listen something, things that may not go with their way of thinking. And I think you are very uh, great colleagues and uh, what you do in your fields, both of you, is remarkable. And I, I will always uh, admire you for this. But the fact that you can also accept contradiction and challenging is even the step further and thank you for uh, for having these things thank you and also <laughs> i see let's have